let's take a look at the lecture number eight. Uh, we discussed sequential circuits, and this was an example of a flip-flop circuit, uh, which can be used to store a single bit in memory. Now, can we saw how that can be done last time. Uh, and then uh, we sort of um, uh, talked about what is the difference between combinational and sequential circuits. And basically the difference was that in combinational circuits, uh, there is no memory, it is time independent, okay? So whatever output you get uh, from a combinational circuit, that simply depends on the inputs. Whereas in sequential circuits, the output depends on previous inputs as well, okay? Somebody's mic is on. Uh, please make sure that your mics are turned off. So I'm going to mute everyone. Okay. So um, in sequential circuits, uh, the output doesn't just depend on the current inputs. It also depends on the previous inputs. Okay. So in other words, you can use that for saving data and memory. And the simple example was that of a flip-flop circuit. Okay. And the combinational circuits, the simple example was a two-bit ad adder circuit. <clears throat> now then we went up the abstraction layer and we looked at, we started looking at the architecture of computers. <clears throat> and we looked at the CPU, the bus, the main memory. And then we looked at how the memory can be addressed. And we saw the differences between different sizes of addresses. For example, a 32-bit versus a 64-bit computer would have a larger 64 bit would be using 64 bits for the addressing por portion of the of the memory and so could have a much larger memory uh, and we also looked at the the bus <clears throat> which connects the the memory the ram and the cpu and there are two types of buses that we talked about the address bus and the data bus and then we went on to look at the components of the cpu we looked at the alu uh, we looked at the registers and we looked at the control unit, the three primary components. And the registers can be simply thought of as memory so that they could be composed of basically a bunch of flip-flops, okay? The ALU was combination logic. So um, that's the difference over here. This is sequential logic. This is combination logic. The control unit is a bit more sophisticated and we didn't really go into the details of that yet. Um, we saw what an ALU did and it had different types of opcode. So it could do addition, subtraction, multiplication and so on. And we looked at, then we looked at uh, being able to achieve a certain operation. So this was the example where we said that we want to do a simple operation where we want to add two numbers that are located, located at address zero, zero and zero, one. And we want to put the, the result in address zero, two. Okay. So when I say address zero, two, it means the RAM address, okay, not the registers. So it's taking the contents of uh, the memory location 00, 0 and 0, 01, and it's taking and doing the addition of those two, and it's putting the, the result in that memory location 0, 02, okay? And this is as far as I think we got last time. So <clears throat> let's take a look at, uh, and then we, we said that we could break that down into a series of, of instructions, okay? And these simple instructions, when they're written down um, as, uh, as symbolic instructions, for example, load or, or add or write, they're also called assembly language, okay? So these can also be thought of as assembly language. Um, and this is symbolic in that it's easy to understand this. However, once it's converted into machine code, it's more difficult to understand because then it's a series of ones and zeros, okay? So sometimes uh, we will look at both the assembly language version as well as the machine code today. So let's try to see how these instructions can actually be executed in memory. Okay, so this is as far as we got last time. So let's go on beyond that. Now, the first question that I have is that where do the actual instructions reside? Okay, so these are the instructions. Now we want to execute them. And we're saying that we want to take the address, the, the contents of address 00, zero which is let's say 0, 03 over here. And we want to take the contents of address 0, 01, which is 0, 05. And we want to add them and we want to put it at this location, let's say, which comes out to be 0, 08, right? But this over here is the actual data that's being manipulated. 
But the question is, where are the instructions? Okay, so um, can anybody suggest where the actual instructions will be? Other side of the floor. Ji, sir. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think it will be in the control unit because it is controlling everything. Okay. But I'm not sure. Okay, but it's a good suggestion. I'm, I'm glad that people who are not familiar with these concepts are giving it an attempt, and that's really the objective of this course, is for you to think out loud. Uh, G, G Umar. Sir, instruction will be stored in the current instruction register, CIR. Okay, the, the, set of the, the set of instructions will be stored in what you're referring to as a single register. Okay. All right, that's also a good attempt. But what I'm saying is that there's not just one instruction, there's a whole series of instructions, right? We want to load the contents, then load this content. There's four instructions. Uh, sir, right is it Muhammad Bilal? Ji Bilal. I think it will be stored in a register as well. Okay, so other suggestions that will be stored, all of these instructions could be stored in the registers. Okay, keep going. Any other thoughts? So one thought was control unit, another was in, a, in all the registers, another was that there's a separate register that it could be stored in. G? So it would be stored in the RAM. Okay, so is that Mudassir? Who is that? Yes, sir. Okay. Mudassir. So Mudassir is suggesting that it should be actually stored in the RAM itself, okay? Now, the question is, if it's stored in the RAM, then what about this, this data? So this data is also stored in the RAM, where would the actual instructions be stored? But that's a very good idea. You're saying basically, so what we could do, and in fact, that is how it's actually done. And um, this architecture is called the von Neumann architecture, okay? Basically what it says is that the instructions or the program, basically this is a program, right? This year, the instructions are basically the program that a developer writes maybe in a higher level language, but it converts into something like a low level language that we can see right now, which is maybe symbolic. But basically this is a high level uh, language that is written. And now what we're saying is that all of these instructions are actually code. And this code also is stored in the same memory, okay? Along with the data, okay? So the data and the instructions both get stored in the random access memory. And this is actually, the architecture of all modern programs, okay, of all modern computer uh, architectures. And this is referred to as a von Neumann architecture based on the chap von Neumann, who was one of the very influential computer scientists uh, in the early days. Um, and then uh, the high level language gets converted into low level code, which we'll refer to as machine code. And we'll take a look at that later on. <laughs> so now uh, we're going to to be able to understand this, uh, we're going to look at a specific architecture. And this is given in Appendix C of the book uh, BNB, the Berkshire and, and Brilo. And this is going to be used as an example to illustrate how a modern computer actually works. Okay, this is a very simplistic architecture, but it's very useful because it will give you an insight as to how actually computer arch architectures work. Okay, so basically the architecture is as follows. Uh, as you remember, the basic idea is that you have registers, okay? You have a control unit, you have an ALU unit, you have RAM. You can think of this as the four basic components, the CPU comprising of two units, three components, and then the memory, okay? And this is what we'll focus on. So the four components, the first component that I'm specifying over here is the registers. And we're going to say that there are 16 registers, okay? We could have said 32 registers, but the example in uh, Appendix C is that of 16 registers, okay? The size of each register is one byte, okay? So this size here is one byte, all right? And there are a total of 16, which means that they go from R0 till all the way up till R. And if it's in hex, it will go up to RF, right? If you remember your hex notation, that's R15 or you could refer to as R15 or RF. And the second thing that is specified in this, uh, in this, in this architecture, and you can refer to this as an eight bit computer because now the address byte, address size is given to be one, one byte, okay? So this is an eight bit computer architecture, not 32, not 64, but a very simplistic 
8-bit computer architecture, okay? Now, my first question to you is that if this is an 8-bit architecture, which means that the address size is 8 bits, can you tell me what is the maximum memory that, could, that it could have? Okay, so if you look at the RAM, uh, what's the maximum amount of memory that could be addressed using an address size of one byte? So this is one byte over here. Okay. Somebody who can uh, answer this, referring back to the previous lecture, how would you calculate this? Uh, will it be 256? Yeah, so it'll be 256 simply to the power eight. So it'll go from actually zero till zero zero till FF, which is 255, okay? From zero to 255 is actually 256, right? Now, the contents of each one of those locations is now going to be one byte, okay? So this is going to be, let's say, this could be zero three, this could be zero five and so on as I was giving you as the example, right? So, so far this is clear that it has 16 registers, each of, each of one byte. Now, let me ask you another question. How many bits do you need to, to use to refer to the 16 registers? Suppose you want to refer to one of the registers. So how many bits would you need? In order to refer to the address, you need one byte, right? But in order to refer to one of the registers, how many bits do you need? It's got, there are 16 registers, right? So the numbers will go from zero to, sorry? How many bits? Any thoughts? And please do remember to say your name before you speak up. How many bits would you need to be able to register to, to specify Mohammed one of Bilal. the people? 128 bits. Okay, so if you have 128 bits, uh, you could address two to the power 128 different numbers, right? Uh, two to the power 128 is it's a lot. If you Set remember, up. two to the power 64 itself, uh, a 64-bit computer has two to the power 64 is 10 to the power 18 or 18 exabytes. So 128 bits okay. is clearly way, way more than you need to be able to address to be able to address one of 16 registers. How many bits would you need to be able to address one of 16 registers? Four, four bits, sir. Four. Yes. Four. What's the answer? It would be four bits. So it would go from zero, 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 zero up till one, 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 one. So that would be a zero, and this would be an F. Okay. So this would be the number 15, and this would be the number zero. Okay. Because there's simply 16 registers, they would be labeled as zero to F. Okay. So you only need just to try to recall, just try to remember. You only need four bits to be able to address these 16 registers. Okay, this will come in handy as we go forward in the architecture. Now, um, we've said there are 16 registers, the address size is one byte, the maximum memory that you can address is 256 bytes. In other words, the memory will go from zero to 255. There could be different contents in each one of those addresses. Okay. Now, in order to execute a program, now, Somebody said that the actual program will be located in the actual memory. Okay, so this these instructions will be located in the actual RAM itself. Okay, so uh, let's try to understand that um, if these instructions are located inside the inside the memory, the first question is, what should be the structure of an instruction? Okay, in order to understand that. Let's try to see what is an instruction doing. The, the first instruction is saying, I want to load, I want to load the contents of address 00 into R0. Okay, this was the first instruction that we did. We said load the contents of address 00 into R0. Okay. So what this is doing is it's taking the uh, the contents of memory location 00, which is was 03, remember. And it's loading this into R0. So as a result of this, 
R0 would have the contents 0, 3. Okay. Now the question is, um, what should be the instruction, a structure of the instruction to be able to execute this, uh, this instruction? Okay. So let's think of the structure of this instruction. It needs to have, uh, it needs to be able to specify what exactly do you want to do. So for example, here you're trying to load something, here you're trying to add something, you, here you're trying to write something, right? So clearly we would need to have some component of the, of the instruction to be able to specify whether you're doing a load or you're trying to do an addition or you're trying to do a write. So basically this is what you really want to uh, execute. Okay, this is the type of instruction. Um, this is often referred to as the opcode. Okay, so this is the code of the operation that you're trying to perform. Now, my question again is how many bits should we reserve for the opcode? Okay, any thoughts as to how many bits should we reserve for the opcode? Because we're going to have a certain structure and it's going to be fixed. So we, want to, we don't want the, the opcode to be sometimes one bit, sometimes two bits, sometimes four bits or 100 bits or whatever. We want the, the opcode to be able to be fixed in size. So what do you two think? Bits. Uh, okay, so with two bits, how many can we do? Can you do load, add and write? So load could be- Yeah, you should be able to do three things. Zero, 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 yeah. one, one, one. Very good. Uh, who is that by the way? Please do speak to me. Heather, 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 Heather. Heather. Okay. So Heather got a suggestion that opcode can simply be two bits. Okay, uh, let's, let me say that as zero, zero or two bits over here, two bits, which means that you could do a load, you could do an addition, you could do a write. Okay, this could be uh, coded as zero, zero, this could be coded as zero, one, and this could be coded as one, zero, and you still have another uh, instruction, another operation that you could perform using the, the fourth opcode. Okay, so that's good. Now, the next thing is, um, what about this instruction? This instruction not only says load, but it also says contents of address zero, zero and load it into a particular register. Okay. So what should be the rest of the structure? Any thoughts on the rest of the structure of this instruction? What else does it need to specify? Any thoughts? So I'm giving you hints over here. Uh, clearly, you can see then in all of these, it's got at least so four bits, two bits for the address and two bits for the register. Okay, so Shazib is saying, I think that is Shazib, four bits, two bits for the address and two bits for the register. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Okay. So let's try that. So we're saying that we can have another four bits and another two bits for the register, okay? And another two bits for the uh, address. Does, um, do people agree or disagree with that? No, sir, I think we need four bits for the address. Okay, people are forgetting to say the name. I didn't hear that, please say, say it again. Said there will be bit for the operator also. Keep, sir. I didn't hear you. Sir, there will be the bit for the operators also. Not hearing you. Okay, sir. I keep. Okay, okay, much better. I need to say these things over and over again so that you identify and also it helps me uh, addressing you. So, Akib, you're saying that uh, you also need addition. Uh, say that again. Say your comments again, I got it. So I think we have uh, to put the bits for the operator. Okay, but you see the operator is also over here in the sense we've already got two bits for the operator. So we already saying that the operation is either load, add or write. So we need two bits for that. Okay, so operator essentially is already done. But the issue is, uh, we just said, how many bits do you need to specify a register? This is a 16 
this is this has 16 registers so how many bits uh, we just answered this question how many bits do we need to be able to specify a register one of one of 16 registers four bits four bits so clearly you need to have four bits over here what about the memory how many bits do we need to be able to specify the memory eight bits eight bits okay people are not speaking speaking their name again but let's go on Heather, so, Heather. Heather. okay so you need to have eight bits for the address and you need to have four bits over here for the uh, register okay four bits over here so now how many what is the minimum size of the instruction how many bits do we have we have got two over here that's four plus eight so that's eight 9, 10, 11 12 13 14 so you've got 14 bits for the instruction okay does that seem reasonable so an instruction will have at a minimum 14 bits to be able to do this okay now if you put the the contents of the, the instruction inside the memory we uh, each memory location has got eight bits right so each memory location has got eight bits so if you want to specify an address it's going to take up how much space is it going to fit in one memory location this location is how many bits it's only eight bits right and we're saying that we need to have at least 14 bits for the memory location for the instruction so it's going to use eight bits over here and another six bits over here so the instruction itself will occupy almost two bytes okay so it will occupy two contiguous memory slots okay now 14 bits is is not a multiple of eight so it generally it would be a good idea to use 16 bits okay so we're not wasting a couple of bits in the memory so what we'll do is instead of using six bits over here we'll use uh, both of these bytes for a complete instruction so it'll be eight plus eight 16 bits okay and where do you think we'll use these two additional bits? Should we use them for the address, for the register, or for the opcode? Any thoughts? Where should we? Sir, Mark, can... G. Uh, so we could we could add extra instructions if we added to the opcode. Yeah. Okay. So Maz. The extra extra opcode is would be useful because right now we're very limited. We only have four instructions. Four is not very good. I mean, four is quite limited. So you might as well make this also eight four bits. Okay. So with four bit instructions, the total number of opcodes that could you could have is two to the power of four is sixteen. Okay. So that in fact is the architecture of the appendix C machine. Okay. So it's going to use two bytes long instructions, okay? The opcode is going to be first four bits. So, th so these four bits is going to be used for the opcode, okay? And this is referred to as the operand, okay? So the rest of these 12 bits are going to be referred to as the operand. So four bits over here and 12 bits over here. Now, how the, these operands are going to be used, can be used, uh, will depend on the actual opcode. Okay, so let's take a look at, at different types of instructions that one could actually use. Okay, so let's say um, we're going to now start defining these opcodes. Okay, so the first opcode, which is defined as one in hex, and this would uh, in binary, it would be referred to as 0001. Remember, we're using four bits over here. Okay. The two would correspond to a zero, zero, one, zero. Okay, so this is in hex. All of these are in hex. This is also generally in hex, okay? Not, not quite. This is sort of what is referred to as assembly code, okay? It's symbolic notation. So the opcode is a one, and this says the instruction is specified. So it will say load the register R, okay? So register R with the bit pattern found in memory cell whose address is x, y, okay? So let's try to decode this. Um, we, want to, um, we want to perform this operation, load contents of address 00 into R0, 
and uh, we've got these two opcodes defined. Okay, so since we're doing a load, um, well, let's take a look at the second instruction. So this one says load um, the register R with the bit pattern pa pattern found in the memory location of X Y, and uh, this instruction here says load R with the bit pattern X Y. Okay. Now, which of these two instructions do we actually want to do? Should we use um, opcode one or should we use opcode two? There's a slight difference between these two. It says load the register R with the bit pattern found at the memory cell whose address is given by X, Y. Okay, so this is the address X, Y. And the second one is saying, load the register R with the bit pattern X, Y, okay? So X, Y is two nibbles. So for example, X, Y could be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0. Um, this could be X and this could be Y, okay? So um, which of these two instruction, these two opcodes would we want to use when we want to load the contents of address 00, zero of memory location 00, zero into R0. Sir, Omar, am I there? Yeah, Sir, Omar. first one, RXY. Okay, very good. Because we're trying to load the contents of this memory location. We're not trying to actually load it up with a particular value. We're trying to load the contents of a memory address. Okay, so we're going to use opcode one. So let's see how this opcode one will be. So the first uh, nibble is going to be a one, okay? The next nibble is going to be what? It's saying uh, load the register R. We want to load which register? We clearly want to load the register, um, register zero. So R is going to be zero, okay? And we want to load it with the contents of address zero, zero, okay? Now, do you see a problem over here? Do we really want to do this? W what would this actually do? Suppose we, we did this, zero, zero, okay? So what is this doing? Basically it's saying execute opcode one, which is going to load the register zero. So R is going to be zero. And it's going to lo load it with the contents of the memory location X, Y. So X, Y is equal to zero, zero. So it's going to go over here and it's going to load this into memory. Okay. But originally we wanted to actually add two numbers, right? Now, these two numbers were originally at the location zero, zero. But now the actual um, program is being put into location zero, zero. So where should we actually put the, the data? Okay, so we, here is where the, the actual program is being put in. So the data has to be moved somewhere else. Okay, so let's assume that the, the data is in location now specified by let's say one, zero, okay? And so the number that the two numbers that we're trying to add now are no longer at location zero zero, but now we move them into location one zero and one one. Okay, so one zero has the number zero three, and one one has the number zero five, and now we're trying to add these two and put the result over here. This is what we're trying to do. Okay, so we push the data, so-called data. Uh, down into a lower portion of the memory. And this is the actual code that we're trying to execute. So this is the one human architecture. The, both the data as well as the code is both in the random access memory, okay? So clearly we don't want to do this because uh, hopefully if you've been able to understand what this is doing, this is not going to do what you want to do. What is it that we want to do over here? And somebody tell me now, we want to load the contents of address, not zero, zero, but we want to load the contents of address one, one 
into R0, we want to load the contents of address one, sorry, this is one zero. And we want to load the contents of one one into R1, and then we want to put the result into location one two. So can somebody tell me what should be over here? Load the, the register R0 with the bit pattern found in memory location whose address is given by X, Y, and you want to load the contents 0, 3 into over here. So what should be the address X, Y? Any idea? One zero, Omar Ahmed. Okay, Omar got it right. So this is going to be one zero. Why is that? Because this specifies the address from where we want to load the contents into register R0. Okay. So I hope everybody is following that. It's a little tricky, but once you get the hang of it, I hope uh, things will become a little easier. Okay. So let's uh, G. So what is the first one denoting? So the first one is denoting the opcode. Remember, we said that the structure is the, the opcode, okay, which is four bits, and then there's the operand, okay, which is 12 bits, okay? So, um, so over here, we only have a one bit opcode? No, it will be four bits. So opcode is always going to be four bits, okay? But it's shown here as a one because these this is all in hex. Okay, so the one actually refers to 0, 0, 0, 001, the zero refers to 0, 0, 0, 0, and one zero refers to you know uh, the equivalent numbers in um, in binary. So this would it could correspond to this. So it would be um, 0, 0, 0, 001 and Zero, 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 zero. So this would be X and this would be Y. Okay. That's an X over here and that's a Y. And this is R. So basically what we execute in executing is one R X Y. Okay. One R X Y. Okay. So if you've been able to understand this, now let's try to do the next instruction. Load contents of address one one into register R one. Okay. Now notice that the instruction itself is two bytes long. This whole thing is two bytes long, right? Because one zero itself will take eight bits, and the next one zero, the X Y will take eight bits. So it's actually going to occupy these two locations already. So the first instruction has now occupied two bytes in memory, okay? So the next instruction, this next instruction over here is going to be at which location? It's going to be at location zero two, okay? So if you follow the first part, let's see if somebody can tell me what would be the, the machine code, and this all is referred to as machine code, okay? When you're writing it in this way. So uh, can you tell me what would be the symbolic or the uh, machine code for um, the next instruction? Load contents of address one one into R1. So which instruction, which opcode will we use? Will we use G Gmals? One, 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 one. Okay, interesting. So that's one, 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 one. Okay, so let's see what that does. It says use opcode one, which says I'm going to load into R1, register one, the contents of memory location one, okay? And memory location one corresponds to this location over here. So this is going to load the number 05 into memory location, uh, into register R1. So the R1 is going to become 05. Okay, excellent. So this is actually going to take up two bytes. So if I were to write it, Differently, it would be a one, one, and then a one, one over here, okay? So you can see that each instruction is now taking up two bytes in the actual memory, okay? So 
so far so good. Um, let's see how far we've got. So you've got the first two instructions done, zero, zero, and I can write that as two bytes over here, okay? So a simple way of doing it is to show contents in two bytes. So Sir, you can, uh, Jim, why would we write it as one, one, and then the next one, one, one? Why not in just the same one? Yeah, so we, you could do it this way. So this is also convenient, one, 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 one. Uh, but this simply, then over here, you've got to understand that this is showing contents of two contiguous bytes of memory, okay? Because this is one byte and this is one byte, okay? So this is also con convenient. In fact, this is more convenient. So this is how I'm actually going to use. I hope that answers your question, okay? So this, this 1111 or 1010 would be referred to as a machine code because it's all in binary or in hex. Okay, but if you were to write it as, for example, one rx1 or load rx1, sorry, load rxy, then it could be considered as a symbolic notation. Okay, so um, we'll refer to it in both ways. Now, so you, we've got the first two instructions done. Uh, let's keep going. Now, what we want to do is we want to add, add registers R0 and R1 and put the result into R2. Okay, so we want to add these two and we want to put the result into R2. Okay, so clearly we need more instructions. So this, these two instructions are not going to do it. So let, let's look at more instructions. So here are further instructions that I'm picking up from Appendix C. Uh, this is opcode number five. And opcode five says that do an addition and is going to add the bit patterns in registers S and T, okay? Take the bit patterns in registers S and T as though they were two, two's complement and leave the instruction in register R, okay? So it's going to put the result in register R. Um, load the bit patterns in registers S and T, which basically means Load the contents, okay? Load the contents of registers S and T and forget about the two's complement for right now and simply leave the result in register R. So can somebody tell me how do we write in machine code the following instruction, add R0 and R1 and put the result in R2? Can somebody tell me what the machine code for this would be? And first of all, where, at what location memory would this would this be, and what would be the machine code? And by the way, would you use this instruction, this opcode, or would you use the next opcode, which says store the bit pattern found in register R in memory cell? Okay. So clearly, we're doing an addition. So obviously, we're going to use uh, the opcode five. So that's a hint. Um, anybody would like to volunteer? Imaz Kareem. Imaz. 5201. 5201. Okay, let's see. And what would be the address location of this instruction? What would be the address location? I think somebody already said it. That's going to be a 04, right? Because each one of them is taking up two bytes. So the next instruction would be at 0, 04, and it would take up 0, 04 and 0, 05 bytes. So 5201, let's see that. So 5 is here. It's going to add the bit patterns in S and T. So it's going to take register 0. This is S and this is T. Register 0 and register 1, and it's going to put the result of these two into register 2, into uh, leave the register in R. Okay, so this is. Uh, R over here, so that's clearly going to do it, okay? R0 and R1 and put the result in R2. Okay, very good, excellent. Um, now let's keep going. Uh, what about the uh, fourth instruction? Okay, and clearly the next instruction is going to be at location 06. Now we want to write R2 to memory, loca memory uh, location 1, 2. Okay, remember the previous memory locations were, we want to put the address, the final uh, 
result into memory location one, two. Okay, so here's one, zero, one, one, and one, two. And um, now I'm sort of only using half one byte over here. So this was, let's say, zero, three, zero, five. And we want to put the result into location one, two. Okay. So what would be uh, the instruction over here? What can somebody tell me what would be the machine code for the last instruction? Name please. Samir. G Samir. Sir, it would be three, two, one, two. Three, two, one, two. Let's see if Samir is right. Saying three says store. And it says uh, register number two, which is register number two over here, and put it into location, which is specified by address one, two. Excellent. Okay. So this would put the contents and the addition would have been already executed. So R2 presumably already has the content zero eight, which is the sum of zero three and zero five. And so contents uh, of location, memory location one, two would now become zero eight. So basically what you've seen is a very simple program which starts off uh, by loading things into register, doing an addition, and then finally saving the data into memory location. Okay, uh, G. Then wouldn't it be a three, three, one, two? Three, three, one, two. Okay, so uh, the suggestion uh, from I think somebody else is three, three. Can somebody tell me, is this right or is three, two, one, two right? Sir, three, two, one, two is right. Three, two, one, two is right because we talked about register number two. Register number two has got the result. So um, we, uh, in the previous instruction, we put the, con the result into register number two, okay? We put the result into R2 and so it's going to be Three, two, one, two. Okay. okay. All right. So this is correct. So any any questions about this simple uh, machine code, uh, machine language, which was actually executing a very simple instruction of adding two numbers from memory and uh, loading them into registers. Remember, why do we load them into registers? Because it's much faster to operate them. And the addition would clearly be using the uh, the ALU. Okay. And it would then, the ALU would put the result into register R2 over here. And then this word from the registers, you would then go into the memory, okay? So that was a simple example. If everybody is clear on that, we, we can move on. Uh, sir, so why didn't yeah. we use the third and fifth addresses? Why skip over there? Okay, so why did we use the third and the uh, third and the fifth addresses. I'm not sure what exactly you mean over here. Zero three, why did we skip over zero three and why did we skip over zero five? Okay, so the simple answer is that this over here, the first byte is in location zero two. Okay, and this one one is actually in location zero three because it's two bytes. So this is actually locate, taking up two bytes in memory. Okay. Similarly, each instruction, if you remember, as I said, the instruction is itself two bytes long. The instruction is two bytes long. So when it's loaded in memory, every instruction will take up two bytes in memory. Okay. All right. So hopefully if that is clear. Now let's move on. Uh, these are some of the other instructions that are present in the machine code, which is in Appendix C. Okay. So let's take a look at some of these. Uh, opcode three, we've already looked at. We looked at opcode five. Let's look at opcode four. Now, what does this do? It says, move the bit pattern found in register R to register S, okay? So um, it's simply moving data from one register to another, okay? Now, the, my question is, are we using the entire operand in this? Okay, the operand has got 12 bits, and we're simply moving the contents of one register to another. So how many, how much of the operand are we actually using in this, in this opcode number four? Uh, 
Are we using all 12 bits of the operand? Okay, remember the operand was 12 bits. Okay, two, four, eight, uh, 12. And since we only specifying two registers over here, are we really using all 12 bits of the operand? Uh, sir Abdullah Maksud, I think we are using only eight bits. Okay, good. So we're only using eight bits because we're using four bits for the R register and four bits for the S register. And if you notice, this is always a zero. Okay, so this, so some of the operands, so we don't always use the entire operand. Okay, depending on the actual opcode, uh, the operand has different meaning. Okay. At times, it could actually signify memory location, and this could specify register. At other times, it could only specify register values. Okay, so you can use the operand in different ways. By the way, do you think that we can use this instruction to move, to directly move? Uh, suppose that we wanted to move the contents of this memory location into this memory location, or Memory from, from here to some other location. Could we do that using this up, uh, these opcodes? Remarking. We must. No, because it says only from registers to register. Yeah, but, but let's say I define a new opcode, right? So here we've defined a bunch of opcodes up to six. Suppose I define another opcode number seven, okay? And what it will do is it's going to take one memory location and move it to another, the contents of one memory location, and it's going to move it to another arbitrary memory location. Can we do that with this instruction? These instructions. Okay, but then we will need more bits. Yeah, exactly. Because, yeah. Exactly. So the reason why we can't do that is because the operand only has 12 bits and the memory needs one whole byte or eight bits. So the only way we could do that is if we could say move x, y into let's say u, v. Okay, these are two memory locations. Now each one of them is going to take eight bits, eight bits, and this is taking four bits. So this instruction is clearly not possible. Why? Because this would require how many bits? Eight plus eight, 16 plus four, it required 20 bits the instruction itself would have to be 20 bits long. And that's not possible because we've defined our instruction to be only two bytes, okay? So this is a limitation of this machine architecture because the machine architecture uses instructions which are only 16 bits. So there are certain restrictions that one imposes as soon as you define a particular machine architecture, okay? Now, um, so let's take a look at uh, another opcode. So this was uh, opcode number four. Let's take a look at um, another opcode, say opcode six. This says add the bit patterns in register S, S and T and use floating point notation. Okay, so that's a little bit more complex. Forget about that right now. Let's take a look at some of the other instructions. Number seven says, and these are all going to be useful and uh, we'll use them in, in later parts of this course. So um, um, number seven says, or the bit patterns found in registers S and T and place the results in register R, okay? So what is this doing? This is basically taking the contents of two registers. Let's say the contents of register one is zero, 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 00001, and this is the content of register R. Sorry, this is the contents of register S, let's say, and the contents of let, register T are, let's say, zero, zero, 0011, one, zero, zero, uh, one, one. Let's say this pattern, and it's going to put the result into register R. Okay. So what is the result going to be? It's going to do an OR. So clearly it's going to be one, one, zero, one, 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 zero, zero. Okay. So hopefully you remember your OR operation and that's what it's going to do. Similarly, 
up, up code eight is going to and the bits. So if you're using and, then it would result in a different operation. It would result in one, zero, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. Okay. Sorry, this should also be a zero. So those are two other opcodes. Uh, nine does simply an exclusive or that again is something we've already studied. This is an interesting uh, operation, okay? This says that um, if you're using opcode A, which is the number 10, rotate the bit pattern in register R one bit to the right X times, okay? So let's say if you have a certain pattern, it's going to rotate it X times, okay? So for example, if I said the opcode A um, and let's say register number one, and I want to, um, and again, I'm not using, um, I'm not using the middle operand, the middle four bits, and I'm saying, let's say a zero over here and a one, okay? So it's going to take, let's say this was the first register, uh, or if, let's say this was the first register, contents, it would rotate it to the right X times. So it's going to rotate it once and each time plays the bit that started at the low end at the high order bit end. So this is basically going to rotate it and the result is going to be a one, zero, 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 zero. Okay, so you can see that this is how it's come out. And this last bit has gone to the other end, okay? So I hope that people can follow this. If not, just take a closer look and take a look at some of the examples as well. Um, now, finally, let's take a look at this instruction, okay? Um, instruction upcode B, R, X, Y. And this says, this is a diff slightly different, okay? So this is saying, jump to the instruction located at memory cell whose addre at address X, Y, if the bit pattern in register R is equal to the bit pattern in register zero, okay? So this is a little bit complicated, but can somebody tell me what would you want to achieve with the jump um, instruction? Uh, remember the high level code that we've been using, uh, the Python code that you've already been doing. Um, think of the different things that we've been doing with, with Python. When would you want to uh, do a jump to a different location in memory? Uh, sir, I think conditional statement. Name, please. Abdullah Maksud. Okay, so a conditional statement. So Abdullah is quite right. In other words, for example, if you were trying to do an execute an if condition, okay? So if you were saying that, you know, if X is equal to, let's say the number three, okay? You wanted to do something. So the way that you would, implement this is that you could put the value of X in a particular register, okay? And then you could put the number three in another register, and then you could do a conditional statement. I'm not going to go into the details of this, but just think about this, and hopefully you should be able to figure out how you could actually do a conditional statement by using this uh, upcode B, okay? But this is a little complex, so you can think about it uh, at home later on. Finally, uh, this is obviously a very important instruction 000, which simply means to halt the execution. Because if you don't have a halt, what would happen? Uh, you start over here. So normally what would happen in let's say a simple one human architecture is that it would start off at location, loca load the contents of this into memory and start executing this, okay? Now after 06, whatever is in the contents of 08 would be treated as if it were part of the code. And it may actually be garbage, okay? It may be random. So it will execute it and that may result in, maybe it may result in a jump to another location and it may actually jump to another location which is in some memory location and it will start doing something completely uh, absurd and it will try start uh, looking at this data as if it was instructions, okay? If that happens, guess what happens? The, the computer actually crashes, okay? Because it's trying to do something completely absurd in memory and the computer doesn't know what's going on and 
you've often seen this blue screen of death on most Windows computers that suddenly the computer freezes and you know, you're pulling your hair out, if you have some hair and like me, then you're pulling your hair out and you suddenly realize that you know, your entire computer has crashed and everything has been lost, okay? So uh, you don't want to do that clearly. Okay, so you obviously need to have an instruction which is 000, um, it simply halts the execution. Okay, and it will just freeze the computer and you could start uh, doing some other instruction. Okay, so um, is that is all of that clear? I hope um, it's not too much. Uh, if you if some of this has become a little bit too much, try to replay uh, some of this and see if you can make sense. Especially, I would like you to go over the jump instructions and the rotate instructions, which are a little bit more complex than the other instructions that we already saw. Is there a question? Okay. So if not, this is a bit of an overview of what we've already seen. Uh, we've looked at the CPU, we've looked at the control unit. We haven't really looked at what the control unit does, but we've looked at what registers are and registers are basically implemented using flip-flops. The combinational law, the ALU, is basically a bunch of combination logic. And what operation is actually performed is controlled by the control unit. Okay, so the control unit actually controls the combinational logic or the ALU. It actually controls everything. Okay. It controls the registers, it controls the, the memory, and so on. These inputs and outputs are what you can think of as data that's coming in from the user. Okay, so if you put in some data in. Um, into the computer, that's the input, and the output is something that you might be seeing on the screen, okay? So this is at a very high level uh, view of the architecture, and this was a different, different architectural view of the same things, okay? So this was the CPU, and this was the memory, and this is the bus, okay? These are two different views of the computer architecture. Okay, so if we've understood this, now let's take a closer look at the, um, at the uh, computer, the CPU architecture, okay? So um, now we're going to take a close look at the CPU architecture, and I'm going to introduce something which uh, one of you had actually mentioned uh, in passing. Uh, there are two special purpose registers, which are referred to as the program counter, the PC, okay? And the instruction register, the IR, okay? So you can think of these as registers. So in addition to your, let's say 16 registers over here, your computer would actually have more further registers. And these would be two examples of two additional registers, okay? Now, why are these being introduced? Because they play an a very critical part in the operation of the CPU, okay? And as we go further uh, into what the CPU does, the, the program counter instruction register will come in handy, okay? So what the PC does is it simply has the address of the next instruction, okay? So initially, the PC is loaded with the location 00, zero because it assumes that the program itself is going to be located, is going to be started off at location, memory location 00, zero okay? So it's going to, this is the address of the next instruction, okay? And IR, the instruction register, actually loads the contents, and it assumes that this is an instruction, and it loads this into the instruction register. So this is the instruction that is being executed, okay? So just think about this. This is basically the address of the instruction, of the next instruction, and this is the actual instruction, so this would be 03 okay when uh, the instruction 03 has already uh, the has already well this was actually a past example but let's assume that this is some instruction over here uh, the previous instruction was actually uh, 1010 so let's assume that this is um, 1010 so it would load 1010 over here and then the, uh, the program counter would be incremented to the 
location of the next instruction, it would be incremented to the location 0, 2. Okay? So it would next be located. The, it would have the content 0, 2, which would mean that the next instruction is located over here. And if this was 1, 1, 1, 1, then when this is, this is going to be executed, it's going to be in uh, the instruction itself would be, look, uh, would be loaded into the instruction register. So this would become 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay? So that's just a little bit more details into the CPU architecture. Now, um, let's take a look at what is referred to as a clock cycle, okay? Inside the CPU, there's something called an oscillator. And the oscillator, basically what it does is, is generates a digital signal, okay? And this digital signal is sort of shown over here. It's basically a series of ones and zeros, okay? So it, simply oscillates, it goes one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, and it keeps on doing this repetitive pattern forever. Okay, it's simply an oscillator as, as the term itself says that oscillates between zero and one, okay? And this here is referred to as a period, okay? So this is a complete cycle. This is one cycle, this is another cycle, this is the third cycle. So here we have a, multi, a number of cycles and the cycle, Okay, it's also referred to as a period or a cycle. And it's basically the duration from the point where this, uh, the, uh, the signal goes from all the way from zero, it goes, stays for zero for a while, then goes up one and then comes down zero. So between these two points, this is referred to as one clock cycle, okay? Now the speed, oftentimes you must have obviously heard that your computer has got you know, it's a two gigahertz computer or it's a four gigahertz computer or one gigahertz. And this simply refers to the speed of the oscillator, okay? So for example, my computer right now is a 2.7 gigahertz computer, okay? Now what does gigahertz uh, refer to? It simply implies how many cycles per second exist, okay? So if it's a one hertz uh, computer, which probably doesn't exist anymore, that simply may, means that this cycle over here takes one second, okay? If it's two hertz, then it means that um, it has two cycles per second. So two of these cycles take one second, okay? So which means that one cycle takes half a second, okay? Or one upon two. So if it's a 2.7 gigahertz, well, let's say if it's a 10 hertz, uh, computer, then clearly the period or the cycle will be one upon 10 seconds or 0 0.1 second, okay? So you basically, in order to be able to compute the period, you take the inverse of the frequency, okay? Now, um, let me introduce some of these notations. You've, you've already seen the notation of bytes. So for example, if N goes from zero, three, all the way up to 23, we saw that you had a single byte, kilobyte, megabyte, all the way going up to yottabytes, okay? Similarly, in terms of frequency, you have a similar notation. So you have hertz, kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz, uh, terahertz, petahertz, exahertz, zettahertz, and yottahertz. Well, computers, I don't think really using these so far. So, so far, most computers are in this range, up to terahertz, okay? Some of the supercomputers are, I'm sure, are working at the petahertz uh, range. Now, if you look at the, the inverse of, the, of that, so a one hertz computer will have a clock cycle, which has a duration of one sec second. So the cycle duration or the period will be one second. If it's a one kilohertz computer, it will be one millisecond. A megahertz computer will have a period which is one microsecond. If it's a gigahertz computer, it will have a period which is one micro, one nanosecond, okay? So my computer over here is a 2.7 gigahertz, which means it is one upon 2.7 uh, billion, uh, uh, you know, uh, cycles in a second. So this comes out to be about 0 0.3 nanosecond. So this cycle over here takes 0 0.37 nanoseconds, okay, in my computer. Your computer would could be different. Okay, so this is referred to as a clock cycle, okay? So there's something called a machine cycle, which basically what it does 
is every in every cycle it does three things, three primary things. Okay, first of all, uh, it needs to do it needs to retrieve a particular instruction. Okay, and let's take a look at the actual architecture, which will be a little bit simpler. So initially, when you want to execute a particular instruction, it needs to get that particular instruction into memory. So this is referred to as uh, the instruction fetch cycle. Okay. So in the instruction fetch cycle, it's taking this content 03 and it's loading it into memory, okay, into one of the registers, most likely into the instruction register. Okay. So that's the instruction fetch cycle. Then there is the instruction decode cycle. Okay. Here what's happening is that it's actually going to try to figure out what is this instruction trying to do? Okay. So a particular instruction needs to be decoded. And that's something that is in the domain of the control unit. So we haven't really spoken about what a control unit does so far. So the control unit is basically doing the instruction decoding. Now the instruction decoding is a little complex. We won't really go into the details of that, but um, uh, we'll just refer to it as an instruction decode cycle. Okay. Uh, the third part of the third part uh, is referred to as the actual execution. So when the addition, for example, is happening, it's taking these two registers. So for example, what you're trying to do is trying to take register R0 and you're trying to take register R1 and you're trying to put the results into register R2. Okay. So this, this portion where it's actually taking these two and it's using the combination logic for that signal to flow through and get executed and to form the result, that is called the execute cycle, okay? So what you can see is that this is basically taking three computer cycles, okay? So in the first cycle is going to fetch instruction and the second cycle is going to decode that cycle, which is basically going to say, well, what is it that the, that the opcode is supposed to do, okay? And the, the um, uh, the control unit is going to do something complicated and it has control circuitry as well, which you have, haven't really taken a look at, but it's going to tell exactly the ALU, exactly which opcode to run, for example, if you're adding two things together, so it's going to tell the ALU, use a certain instruction, okay? And that's going to be done in the second cycle. And in the third clock cycle, it's actually going to execute it, okay? So you can see that, and actually there is sometimes there's a fourth cycle as well where you're actually writing this into a particular register. Okay, that's called the write back cycle. Okay, so you can have three, four, or even more cycles before a particular instruction is executed. Okay, so um, that gives you an idea of what a cycle is. And uh, I'm going to stop over here with a simple analogy and hopefully uh, you can understand that if some of you um, have been doing your laundry yourself as opposed to your mom's doing it, okay? So let's take a look at this analogy in the next couple of minutes. Let's assume that you have a laundry room, okay? And there are three things in there. There's a washer, okay? There's a washer, there's a dryer, and then there's something that you need to fold the laundry, okay? So you have loads of laundry coming in and each load of laundry comes in, uh, it goes through the washer. Let's say the washer takes 20 minutes. Okay, this is a 20 minute cycle. And then after the, you're done with the washing, you put the load into the dryer. That takes another 20 minutes. Okay, 20 minutes here, 20 minutes here. And then after it's done to the dryer, then you come in into the laundry room and you take 20 minutes to, let's assume, you take 20 minutes to fold all your clothes. Okay, so this is a, a simple analogy of what's going on inside the CPU. Okay, now what we're trying to do is we're trying to speed things up. But let's say a simple um, machine cycle, what it's going to take is it's going to take the first load of clothes. In the first 20 minutes, it's going to put it in the washer. Once that is done, in the second 20 minute cycle, it's going to put um, the load into the dryer, okay? It's come over here. And in the third, in the third 20 minutes, it's going to put it 
you, you're going to come in and you're going to start folding all the clothes, okay? So it's going to take 20 minutes, 20 minutes, 20 minutes, an entire hour, okay, to get one load of clothes through this laundry room, okay? And then the second person comes in and he says, well, I need some more laundry done. So the second person comes in with the second load of clothes and in the next hour, he's going to repeat the whole thing, okay? And the third uh, person is going to come in with some more load and he's going to take uh, the another hour to get the laundry done, okay? So to be able to get three laundries done, it's taking up three hours, okay? Now, clearly this is not very good, okay? And you can obviously see that there is a better way that we can improve this, okay? And I'm going to stop over here and I'm going to keep this open. And next time when we come back, we're going to try to see how can we expedite this whole process. And once you can see how you can expedite this in, inside your laundry room, hopefully you'll see how things work inside the CPU to be able to expedite things.